Good evening, ladies and gents. I'm Archangel, and tonight on Black Velvet Radio, we have the privilege to host Morton Villand, the mastermind behind Sirenia. And we are going to talk about the newest release at the beginning of 2021, hopefully a better year from 2020 for everyone. Ladies and gents, the new album from Sirenia, Riddles, Ruins and Revelations. Hello, Morton. How are you doing? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. And how are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are things going to Norway? Or Norway? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I think pretty much the same as uh, in the rest of Europe, I suppose. You know, uh, we're still struggling with, uh, with the pandemic up here, you know, having all kinds of regulations and restrictions and all that, that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much all fed up with with the whole COVID-19 uh, at this point. And uh, unfortunately, it seems like it's it's going to stay with us for a while longer. So I guess we got to be a bit more patient, you know, before we can finally get back to living our lives in, in a normal manner again. Well, we, hope, we hopefully uh, everything goes well. So... 10th studio installment for Sirenia, the title Riddles, Ruins and Revelations. How you and the band feel? Um, it's a mixed feeling, actually, a little bit, you know, bittersweet in a way. Uh, it always feels fantastic, you know, to have uh, finished uh, a new album. And um, it's an exciting period, you know, right before the release and, and all. Um, but this time, you know, it's... Uh, kind of with mixed feelings due to the, the pandemics, you know, and, and that we are not able to go out on tour. You know, normally uh, when we release a new album, then uh, we, we set out uh, on tour to promote the album. And, you know, it's always very exciting to play the new songs for the fans. And, and you know, after such a long time in the studio and, and working and... Um, you know, it's we always really look forward to the touring part, you know, where we can finally get out of our uh, studio and, and start traveling and playing and, and all that. And and for now, that is not possible. So, uh, yeah, we basically just have to take care of the, um, the normal promotion and uh, crossing our fingers that, uh, you know, that uh, things things will, will get into a normal shape as soon as possible. So we... Um, and everybody else out there, you know, can start touring again and, and start going to, to concerts again. So, correct me if I'm wrong. I, If I remember right, uh, the album is due to release, uh, I, if I remember right, February the 12th. Yeah, right? that's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. As you said, we are living on strange times. So, it was difficult for you to making the album. Did you have any postponed... Uh, dates for the album um yeah i mean uh, we were supposed to start uh, our recording sessions uh, in march in uh, in 2020 uh, and just a few days before emmanuel was supposed to travel to norway to to start her vocal sessions um then uh, the pandemic broke out and uh, the travel restrictions came so her flight was cancelled and uh, and she wasn't really able to come back to Norway until the middle of August. So uh, it was, you know, like postponed more or less six months. And um, in the whole that period, you know, it was really, really difficult to plan anything, you know, as we, we didn't really know what was going to happen the next week or so. And we bought her new flight, flight tickets a couple of times and uh, they all got cancelled. And... Um, yeah, so mid-August, then she was finally able to start vocal recordings. Uh, in the meantime, um, I was recording all my parts here in Norway, and uh, the other guys was recording uh, their parts in uh, Finland and uh, in France. Um, so we kind of had to improvise a bit, you know, and, and try to find solutions as we went along, you know, to, to make everything work out. But... Uh, but in the end, we were all happy, you know, we were able to to complete the album and uh, we feel really, really happy with the results. OK, I'm not going to lie to you. I never heard very much of Sirenia or very fond of female fronted symphonic metal, not because it's bad, 
but there are so many bands playing this genre and you have to, you know, make something really unique to stand out. So when I phoned about the interview, I made my search for Sarinia and I admitted I heard uh, Riddle Ruiz and Revelations with a grain of salt. And boy, the kick on my face for what I heard was fierce. Believe me, and I'm still counting my teeth. <laughs> now, uh, what do you believe about that? I like the album. Yeah. And did you believe that this genre that you serve it's a little bit has a little bit of fatigue in a way i mean i mean i started in this this genre in in the mid 90s you know in 1994 1995 and at this point there was basically no bands there was i think paradise lost and and you had uh fear of tragedy just started up and and I probably knew maybe one or two more bands uh, in the genre, but that was it, you know. I, I didn't know about any other bands uh, at that time. And, uh, you know, seeing over these um, uh, 25 years, you know, that, uh, that the genre has grown into something very big. There's so many bands out there now. And as you said, it's probably getting harder and harder for for bands to stick out and to to do something um, unique and original, uh, that is something that has been uh, important to us the whole way. You know, uh, trying to to release albums that are um, are you know unique and uh, and, and typical Serenia. Uh, you know, uh, we like to stay true to our our uh, basic concept. You know, try to not go too far away from it from album to album but but in the same time it's also very important for us to to bring uh new things to the table with every album you know and uh this last album reels runes and revelations is not uh, not very symphonic i'd say uh the previous album you, was you, a lot you more... have the advantage of goth elements and uh, maybe someone of my experience, as I said, I'm not very experienced on that kind of music. I will say that. That's why I'm saying I'm sorry about the album. It was beautiful. But uh, I think that uh, on that uh, direction of that band, I, there is a fatigue. And that's why I was uh, surprised beautifully heard a, hearing your album. It was something fresh. And uh, I think, I think, one of the tip of the spear of the album was the vibe of the, the electronic vibes, the electronic oh. elements that you had. It yeah, was thanks. something not very, not very basic. I don't know how to say it. It's something that I liked it. It had that kind of in your face kind of attitude on that genre. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely a kind of direction we wanted to take with this album. You know, the, the symphonic elements has kind of been with us since the start, but on some albums it was strong, and on some albums there there was hardly symphonic things at all. So it's something that came and went with us uh, from album to album. And, and with this new one, uh, we didn't really focus much on, on the symphonic part, but as you mentioned, we... We focused way more on electronical elements and we also tried to to use the keyboards in a different way and, and bringing in a bit more retro sounding um, keyboard sounds and i think uh, a lot of the keyboard work is is actually quite inspired by the 80s actually well yes i can say and something that i noticed is that the the album the, the vibe of the album is more straightforward than symphonic. And it was, yes. you know, something fresh. And, yes. I, I really liked, and I think not only all, all the band members had something to give, and, uh, and I believe Emmanuel was one of, the, one of the tip of the spears that you have. It has a very unique sound, that, a very unique voice that really stands out on the album. And I really like that. Yeah, I absolutely think so too. And she's a very diverse singer too. You know, she can sing, you know, um, 
rock metal, you know, typical modern sounding styles. Uh, she can sing classic opera and she can uh, sing even jazz if I asked her to, you know, she she has she's been educated for I think seven years or so and she's been singing in the French opera for for years and years. So she she really has a lot of experience and um a lot of education, you know, and um, yeah, she's an absolutely fantastic singer. And uh, for me, as a songwriter, it's uh, it's amazing, you know, to to have such a singer in the band. You know, whatever I'm composing, uh, she has the ability to sing it. So it it gives me very uh, free hands, so to speak, when I'm composing. You know, I can go in whatever direction I like, and uh, Emmanuel will always be. Be, uh, be able to follow up on that. You know? So we can say, what is you know the direction of the new album? You know, in comparison with the previous ones, we said about the more straightforward style. I noticed the the electronic vibes. Is there anything else that you believe that you wanted to express on that new no. album? I think. Um... The biggest changes um, with this album compared to the previous one, for example, I, I'd say is that you know the previous one was way more um, symphonic, uh, and the new one is is leaning more towards uh, um, the electronic elements and uh, retro-sounding keyboards, so to speak, and um, it's not that heavily symphonic orchestrated. There's a few elements here and there you know which is a little bit symphonic but but not really much uh, compared to previous albums for example so I'd, yeah I'd, I'd say that's the big, the biggest difference we, we really try hard to to come up with something fresh and modern and new with this album this time as I searched uh, it was the first time that you produced mixed and mastered the album by yourself but not the first time it was the first time for Cyrene but not the first time entirely I think the first time was Mortemia right yeah I've also um, uh, mixed uh, produced and mixed Mortemia album uh, I didn't master it though it was mastered in uh, Finvox studios in Finland um, but I also I mixed uh, I never mastered before uh, but I I mixed a few albums before, and and with the pro producing part, it's something that I've been doing for for a longer time. You know, uh, the two first albums, uh, I was a co-producer, and from the third album and on, so basically the eight last albums I've uh, been producing um, on my own. Uh, so the producing part is is where I have the longest uh, experience. So, 10 years, almost 10 years have had passed since the first time you've done that. Do you believe that there was a challenge now? Uh, we can concern about the, that you've done that on a period of a pandemic. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the mixing part, you know, is something that I've been, I've been working with uh, the, the last 10 years, you know, on and off and to some, some extent. Uh, in the last couple of years, I've been more and more interested in that part, you know, and and working more and more with it. And um, but but I, st I still wasn't really sure, you know, whether I was going to mix on my own for this album or wait for for a later one. But um, when the pandemics broke out and, and everything turned out the way it did turn out and everything got so complicated and. You couldn't really make plans for anything, so then I thought, yeah, I, I guess this time it's uh, it's the the best way to go to do it uh, myself. Okay, let's talk about the artwork. It's more or less the a, a signature of Cyrenia, this kind of uh, artwork. But I believe it's more the new artwork is more heavy and dark, it's like Dim Days of Dolor or like Seventh Life Path. Some words about the artwork? Yeah, it's um, it's the same guy that had have done all the, the three uh, artworks that you mentioned. 
uh, Gaiula. He has been working with us now for quite some years. And in total, he did the last four albums for us. And um, so we feel we have a really good uh, cooperation going. You know, I think he really understands what we're looking for. And um, usually when we start, start out with with a cover i just have a a basic concept for for the artwork you know a basic idea of whatever you know direction i want to take the artwork and so on and i just present uh, my id to to him and he he starts developing you know and bringing in his own um ids and so on and you know he's working with it and then we communicate a bit, a bit back and forth you know and uh we always seem to end up with um, really nice artworks that we are really happy about, and, and he is also really happy about. So it's uh, yeah, it's a really nice cooperation, and uh, I think he's he's really the right right guy for for Serenia. So one of my personal questions, something that I noticed when I'm searching about Serenia, I noticed about the debut album, the title of the album, Sixes and Sevens. And then I noticed on some of the albums, like Dim Days of Dolor, Arcane Astral Eons, and of course the new album, Riddles, Ruins and Revelations. Every word has the same letter. It's something that you like to do. Yeah, a lot of pe people have asked me about, you know, whether there's a connection between the albums or so uh, with the titles, but... Um... Yeah, you know, actually, it's just they're all individual titles, and there is no like deeper connection in in any such way. It's just uh, it's, you know one of my preferences with uh, with making the titles. You know, I like uh, an album title that uh, clings very well, and that um, that has a, a deeper kind of meaning to it. You know, a typical a title that um, the listeners would have to uh, to think. A bit about you know to try to to understand what what really lies behind the title and uh, these uh, alliterations is something that I've been using quite a bit in my titles and also uh, numerology for example and some of the um, other album titles. So, what other things Morton likes to write about on his songs? Um, I'm mostly you know focusing on. On darker stuff, you know, um, the darker aspects of life and, and mankind in general, and uh, um, you know, basically the things um, that happen around me, you know, that is uh, not not of the uplifting kind of stuff. But, <laughs> and writing about it is 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 one way to to kind of get it out of the system. But uh, but also, you know, it comes quite natural to write about these things um, because you know the 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 feeling and the atmosphere in our music is, is quite dark and, and melancholic and, and dramatic and so on so we need um, subjects you know that that fits really well together with uh, the atmosphere in our music okay we have two videos for the promotion of the new album the one is addiction number one and we have a visualizer and official audio about Come to Ruins. We Come to Ruins, I'm sorry. Mm. Some words about that. I so, believe addiction number one is about gamble, I think. Yeah, addiction number one was our first uh, single. And it's about, you know, addiction in, in different forms. And, um, you know, most people, I believe, have you can relate to it in one way or another, you know, uh, either by their own experience or by people they are connected to, people they know or or so on. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it was, it's a subject that, it, you know, it felt natural to write, write about that subject um, on this album. And um, We Come to Ruins uh, was our second single. And uh, it's, um, I would say, maybe uh, a song that is a bit more typical for Serenia, so to speak. The first single was very, very different and 
you know, compared to everything we did before, it was a very different uh, song. And, and the second single was more, probably more typical for our sound. Uh, even though, you know, we did the song in a kind of a renewed and modernized way, so to speak. And uh, I believe there's coming two more, two more videos. Uh, one video that is going to be released right before the album. And then there will come a fourth uh, video a little bit after the album release. Okay, Morten, do you like making covers? I think you know what I mean. Uh, covers? Yeah, it's not something... Um, in my entire career, I did... With Serenia, I did two covers. Uh, and I believe I did one cover with a different project that hasn't been released. Um, so it's not something I do very often, but... Uh, if I find the right song, then uh, then I really enjoy uh, doing a cover version of it. Uh, for example, the the song we choose um, on this album, the Voyage Voyage, um, a hit song from the eighties. Uh, you know, the first and foremost, you know, I, I've really been a big fan of this song since it was released. You know, back in nineteen eighty six, uh, and I first time I heard it on the radio, I really fell in love with it. Uh, Probably because the the kind of uh, melancholic feeling there is to the song. Uh, it's a minor based song, and um, so I really, you know, kind of fell in love with the, the whole feeling of it. And I've been a fan of the song ever since, you know. So uh, it, it felt natural to do a, a cover version of it, and and also, you know, this album being so um, inspired by the '80s in many ways, uh, it would also fit. Uh, really well to do a cover version of a song from the 80s well uh, it was funny because i was you know something that i like to do is when i'm uh, preparing an interview you know writing the, the questions is you know listening the the album to take a to take an inspire inspiration about that and then as i was writing i heard the song and it was hey i know that song <laughs> and i was like oh my god it's a cover and i was oh my god it's beautiful it was a very fitting for Sirenia to make that cover. It's, it's like one of your songs. And it was yes. very, very beautiful. It's very fitting for you. Thank you. I mean, that's what I like, you know, when I do a cover uh, version of a song. I like to take a song from a completely different genre, you know, and then try to turn it into a Sirenia song, you know, or, or to put our stamp and our sound on it. And uh, I really, you know, from hearing that song over the, over the years, you know, I de developed some ideas, you know, of, of how I could really uh, imagine this this song sounding in a, in a Sirenia version. So at some point, I just decided to go for it, you know. Okay, let's, let's talk about something that we are living now. The consequences of COVID-19 from the start of 2020 to the music industry, and not only affected many bands, labels, and releases, of course. What is your plans for supporting Riddles, Ruins, and Revelations? Any tours in mind with all this situation concerned? I believe some of your tours has been postponed for later dates. Yes, uh, I mean, all of our plans pretty much for 2020 and, and also for 2021 has been uh, put on hold, put on ice, and... Uh, for now, it, it just it don't seem uh, realistic that we will be able to tour until probably by the end of the year or something like that. I hope it will be possible sooner, but but it seems that the COVID-19 will stay with us for, for quite some time more, I'm afraid. How are things going to, in Norway with the pandemic? Uh, it's going a little bit up. We had a wave uh, where things were getting quite bad. Uh, but now the numbers are, are going down again. So I think at the moment it's a positive trend. There are some outbreaks uh, in some, uh, some cities. And uh, so it's a little bit hard to say. Um, we also got the, the UK mutant version of the virus, which is spreading really fast. Um, we got that in the southeast of Norway now. So it's, yeah, it's, you know... 
we don't really know how that will uh, develop. You know, if if it will, there will be a third wave now, or or if we will get control of it. Hopefully, if everything goes well and uh, COVID give us some slack, do you believe that we will see Sirenia on the summer? Well, I know it's difficult. Yeah, I, I mean, I really hope so, but um, but realistically. I'm not sure if, if that will be will be be possible. I mean, it seems like with the vaccination programs, things are are moving quite slow, and there's delays with the deliveries of the vaccine and so on. And God knows uh, how long this whole process will take. You know, so it's yeah, it's it's not looking too optimistic right now, but. Uh, I mean, I definitely hope that we'll be able to start touring again by the end of the year or at least beginning of 2022. A few months ago, ago, I read an article about the difficulties the American venues have. Maybe one third of them will close due to coronavirus. Do you have the same problems in Norway? Um, I am not sure um, how the situation is. I know that uh, a lot of venues are struggling um, and a lot of venues are receiving uh, support from the government. Um, so I hope, you know, as many as possible will make it through the crisis. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's it's quite tough, you know, and if, if this is going to last for even one more year, then, yeah, I really don't know, you know. Um, I'm quite sure that the, the venues are really dependent on on getting support from from the government to to make it through this crisis. Okay, let's talk now about your other bands. We will ever see something like a new material for Mortemia or maybe Tristania? Uh, Mortemia, I believe, um, because um, I'm actually working on some new songs at the moment. Uh, due to the COVID-19 situation, I have more time for writing now, so at the moment, I'm spending my time uh, composing some stuff for Mortemia. So I do believe it will be possible to, to hear new Mortemia stuff uh, this year. Okay. What other bands are you listening this time around? What other bands Morten listens to? Um, it, you know, it really depends a lot. And I listen to a lot of bands in different genres. Um, in, in, you know, a lot of stuff from the 80s and uh, early 90s, I like. Uh, from the bands that are actual, you know, today, uh, I've been listening a little bit lately to um, to uh, Five Finger Death Punch. and uh, But but not so many new bands, to be honest. Mostly it's, it's older stuff from the 70s, 80s and, and early 90s. As a kid, what were your heroes that influenced you to, to become a guitar player or making a band? I think um, in the very beginning, uh, definitely uh, Alice Cooper and Guns N' Roses were, uh, you know, the, you know, my kind of idols, you know, at that time when I, I was uh, 13, 13, 14 years and and wanted to start my own band. So I believe those two artists was probably the, the biggest inspiration for me to, to buy a guitar and, and start practicing myself. Any memories from the first time you went on stage? Any funny memories, you know, moments? Um, I can remember it, you know, um, it's, I believe it was in 1990, 91 or 92, um, it was a quite small venue, local venue here in Norway. And mostly just remember, we were all really, really nervous, you know, um, for going on stage. <laughs> it was like, you know, ex extremely nervous. Um, so that's the, pretty much everything I can remember from from that, that show. <laughs> Okay, any memories from the worst or best show that you had? Um, 
we've had some really nice shows. Um, we've been, you know, very lucky to play uh, um, several uh, several big uh, summer festivals in Europe. You know, back in open air, we played a couple of times and grass pop metal meeting, uh, summer breeze open air, and um, and you know, so I have really really great uh, great memories for that. And um, th I don't really have much bad memories. There was, you know, sometimes it occurs, you know, that that we we have some um, some technical uh, problems, and that can always be really frustrating, you know, when you're on the stage and you're doing your best, you know, giving everything for your fans, and and then uh, technical issues start to occur with. Like for example, power supply problems in the venue or something like that is can be very frustrating. Okay, so any last message to your fans? Um, yeah, I would like to say cheers, you know, to to our um, all our fans in Greece uh, with Serenia. We have been there two times and and played, and uh, both times was a fantastic experience and. Uh, you know, we really want to come back as soon as possible, and um, and hopefully, the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic will be under control um, quite soon, so that we are able to come back again and and play once more. Okay, Morten, thank you very much about this interview. So Hi. the new album from Cyrenia, the twelfth day of February. Morten, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Thank you.